Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, first of all, how are you? Good. We're really hot. We're not used to this weather. In England, it's not very warm yet at yeah, all. Yeah, we're dying. <laughs> I'm dying. Well, um, then I must believe, because you lived in Moscow, that must have been even yeah. worse. <laughs> well, it was colder. Hmm. And uh, it gets really hot in the summer, but... Um, yeah, the winters were long and cold. Uh, and I believe you went there to study the cello? Yeah, at the Moscow Conservatory. And uh, uh, Jack, he followed uh, suit and then uh, studied, I, th I think it was film? Yeah, he studied cinematography at the um, film school in Moscow, which is called Geek, and it's the oldest film school in the world. It's very, like, um, thorough, old-fashioned training. And um, how instrumental to do the sound of the band was that period for you? Um, I think it was quite influential, um, particularly our song Mozart's House, which was written there, um, was influenced by being there because we lived above a kiosk that was selling house music, mm. Russian house music, and um, pumping it out really loud from their speakers all day. So we were hearing it all the time, and that was kind of what inspired to, um, Jack to write a house beat, because before that we were writing more like reggae and hip-hop beats. And was this uh, period in Russia, was it before or after Cambridge? Um, well, I was there for a bit before and after. Okay. Uh, but, but did you know uh, Neil before you went to Russia? Yes, okay. a bit, yeah. but not really. Like, we, we were at school together, but... Um, in different years, mm -hmm. so Neil's a few years younger than me. So we knew each other and we'd played together a couple of times, but we didn't start playing together a lot until we went to Cambridge and started this string quartet there. And um, yeah, I believe you started hosting your own uh, cl club shows, or um, I wrote down what it was called National Rail Disco. National Ra yeah. Rail Disco. Um, so, what was it born out of? Um, well, that was actually born out of putting on a Clean Bandit's first ever gig. Okay. We, um, our first show, we put, we put on a night in order to do a Clean Bandit gig. But that wasn't called Clean Bandit at the time. And um, it went so well and so people had such a great time that we were able to kind of ride off that and start up a kind of longer running club night. But at that time, so there was a definite ambition to, to form a band and, and start making music together? Yeah, that was why we organised the night mm. to, to play together. So we, Neil and I were already playing classical music together, mm. but we wanted to play with Jack. Um, and so we organised this club night to do that. Well, with, um, if you go back to the first time you played on that night, um, was the sound similar to what it has become? It was quite different, really. Yeah, it quite, quite different. It was quite kind of hip-hop and all the strings were classical samples. Yeah, Whereas there's a lot more strings than there are now yeah. in the music. Like, it was all based on classical music. And uh, now only two of the songs on our album are kind of based on classical music, and the rest are original string parts. Mm. Uh, but they're kind of fewer and far between. Do you know why this developed? Why, why it happened that the strings kind of went to the background a bit? Well, they're not really in the background, but they're just... Um, we... Well, we lost two members of the quartet, mm -hmm. so that was... Oh, so, so uh, it yeah. was the full quartet playing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. and they yeah, they kind of pursuing other things. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't get such a rich body of sound mm -hmm. from, from just the two players, so Jack is kind of less inspired to write, like loads of string parts all through the songs so now they're used more like textually like in rather be we're playing the same um din -din 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 -din, mm -hmm. same like line as the synths but adding this kind of sound that you can only get from wooden string instruments well i read somewhere that uh, a lot of the early songwriting was was based out of um the perspective of visuals that uh, kind of a uh, visual view of, of what a song would be. Was this uh, true for Rather Be as well? 
No, it wasn't really no. for Rather Be, was it? The video idea for that came yeah. a long time after we made the song, um, which was the first time actually that had happened, okay. that the video ideas were very kind of separate from the music. And um, I think you can feel it when you watch the video. It's not so kind of integrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's a kind of narrative that's about this Japanese chef who becomes a fan of the song and gets obsessed with singing it and has hallucinations seeing the band members around mm -hmm. in her daily life. But uh, the song then, it has become an enormous hit in the UK. It uh, broke records here in the Netherlands. It broke uh, uh, Spotify records. Uh, yeah. Did you know in the studio there was going to be uh, a good song? <laughs> I think yeah, we, we, knew we thought it was, it was a good, good song. <laughs> we thought it was a good song, but I don't think we would have ever predicted that it would do what it has. Mm -hmm. We um, we start we played it all summer at festivals last year before we'd made any recordings of it, and um, even though no one had ever heard it before, but it seemed like people were kind of singing along by the end, and it kind of caught people's imagination on the in the live show. So I guess we got some sort of suggestion from that, but. Yeah, we could never have anticipated this. But in terms of how the song came together then, um, where did it originate? Where, where did, the, did the inspiration come from? Um, well, we were listening a lot to the Rosie <coughs> Gaines song. Um, what's it called? Closer Than Close. Closer Than Close. And we wanted to make something kind of in that, like, sim right. a similar vibe to mm -hmm. that. Um, so we started with that tempo, and then the drum beat came first, actually, and then the synth line, the diddly -di 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 -di. mm -hmm. Jack actually wrote that when he was on the tube, on the metro, just with a, um, he just had his laptop and he was just typing it in on the keyboard. Um, so that was quite funny. And then, and then we decided to play that line on the strings and make it that kind of, rich introduction mm. to the song and then the vocals came last um, uh, written together with Jimmy Napes who mm. wrote a lot of Disclosure's um, album and yeah he it was the sentimental kind of love story came from him like when when we made the instrumental track we didn't know what it was going to be about and so it was quite nice for us all that it became this kind of love Song. Well, um, how did it come together with uh, Jimmy? Because did you ask him to, to help write the song, or was it uh, something that you do for every song? Because uh, obviously you need guest uh, singers, so do you let them then decide what the lyrics will be? Or I guess it differs from song to song. There are some, some tracks where the vocals and lyrics have been written by us and by Jack, and then there's some, we, we, we'd written with Jimmy Nicks before, so Dust Clears. Yeah, we worked that. together with him, Dust Clears and Extraordinary, Which our latest that? single. Yeah. And then sometimes the singers write them by themselves or in, in the studio with Jack. Yeah. So it kind of differs from song to song. But, so th for you, it's, it's mostly about the music, uh, that's where it starts for you and then... Yeah, it always yeah. starts with that. But, um, Jack was very involved in writing the lyrics for Rather Be as well. It wasn't like Jimmy mm. goes off on his own. It was like they were together on a piano, like um, working it out. Right. But I think the sentimental side comes from Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, the song did really well. Um, was there a scare, maybe? Because has, has it gone for you? Have, have you experienced the past couple of months? As a roller coaster, or because you've been a band since I believe 2009, so has it been as quick for you as it has been for for so, sort the of public? yeah? It's been, I guess it's kind of our day-to-day -day life has changed quite a lot in that we're just incredibly busy all the time. But I guess maybe we would have been busy anyway because our album's out now, mm -hmm. and so that entails a lot of kind of surrounding work, but. It definitely hasn't been as quick for us as yeah. for the public. Mm. It's been yeah many years of like tr of making in, music. In the UK, we had a, 
a hit, a song that went in the top 20 last year. So it doesn't, it wasn't quite as kind of out of nowhere mm. there as it maybe has been in Europe. So is, is that one of your fears, might not be the right word then, but a worry that people only know rather be and then because the way people consume music nowadays, they, they don't really see the album? Well, no, not really, because um, the album is just coming out this week, so um, hopefully people will listen to that. I don't, it, yeah, that hasn't really been a fear, just because Rather Be is the first that we've released here outside of the mm. UK, so hopefully the next one we release will, will go down well as well. <laughs> okay, um, my time is up, so thank you very much for your Thanks time. Thanks a lot.